stars are all my friends till the night time <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Ride Home Podcast. My name is Abby. Hey, guys, it's Caitlin. If you hear any rumblings, we're in the middle of a storm and a rainfall, and it's <laughs> just Charleston this summer has just been a perpetual storm. Yeah. So it's a thunderstorm every day, every single day. But, but I do. I love do. It. Yeah, I, I love I a thunderstorm. I, uh, I love a thunderstorm at night, especially. Mm-hmm. Just so cozy. I love it. I know. And here we are, just in another thunderstorm, Mm -hmm. but we got to watch a little movie in a thunderstorm, which is even cozier. We are continuing our August throwback series, Mm -hmm. and obviously we started with the listener's choice, Mm -hmm. which was Interstellar. Yes. And now we have moved on to my choice, not because I'm more important, but because Caitlin literally hasn't picked a movie yet. <laughs> and it'll probably be a whole lot longer till I pick. I feel like you're going to pick it like the second before yeah. we start playing it. That's usually how I roll. I'm a last minute kind of gal. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. I couldn't make a decision. You can. Mm-hmm. So we went with yours first. Yeah. I was torn between a couple of options, one of them being The Godfather, because Mm -hmm. neither of us have seen The Godfather, Mm -mm. and it is, yeah, I know, I'm going to say that again, neither of us have seen The Godfather. I'm sorry, I apologize, don't hate us, don't beat us up, don't cancel (laughs) us. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. We have just never gotten around to it. Neither of us are mobster people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we hated the Irishman with yeah. like a passion. Mm-mm. I know they're like not the same era, but sure. literally you can miss me with organized crime. Definitely. So I was considering doing that because that is known as such like a top movie throughout the years. Mm-hmm. However, I decided to go with a movie that I think I know every word to. We went with the 1991 classic to some people, horrible movie to others, <laughs> Steven Spielberg's Hook. I don't know how many people know this, but Hook is widely known as Steven Spielberg's worst movie. Okay. People consider it to just be an absolute train wreck. And by people, I mean critics. Okay. Because there is the critic score, if you look on Rotten Tomatoes, which Mm -hmm. is a 29%. Mm -hmm. And then you see the audience score, which is 76%. Mm -hmm. Clearly a huge difference. Very big discrepancy there. (laughs) Huge discrepancy. And so I picked this movie because it is a movie that I grew up watching that holds a very special place in my memories, in my childhood. And it's a movie that is widely considered to be bad, Mm -hmm. which I only recently found out because I was like, wait, other people don't love this movie. (laughs) (laughs) You're telling me people hate this? You're telling me that people hate this movie? Interesting. I'm going to read just a couple of, you know how Rotten Tomatoes picks out like one sentence Mm -hmm. for each review? I'm just going to read a couple of the reviews, and these are in order, so there's just like never a good review okay. on Rotten Tomatoes. Gene from the Chicago Tribune says, a woefully uneven retelling of the Peter Pan story. First of all, it's not a retelling. Mm-mm. So, Gene, get do it together. Do your homework, Gene. Do, do your homework, Gene. <laughs> uh, Dave, also from the Chicago Tribune, says, Hook never sets sail. Jonathan Rosenbaum from the Chicago Reader. Everyone's from Chicago, apparently. Steven Spielberg's Neverland carries undeniable charm and depth. The problems start when we're asked to accept its two-dimensional residence as anything other than tourists on a forced march through its various, n- various nooks and crannies. Okay. Jonathan's being complicated. Yeah. Variety staff says, despite its cascade of wondrous effects, massive battles between kids and pirates, and face-offs between Pan and Hook, the film truly doesn't take flight. That's a better analogy than set sail. Yeah. Take flight is better than set sail. Hook is a huge party cake of a movie with too much frosting. After the first delicious bite, sugar shock sets in. Love the nod to the food fight scene. Mm -hmm. So basically, what I'm reading here is that critics feel like it is a little overstuffed 
a little too heavy on exposition, a little too long, a mm-hmm. little everything, whatever. Just a little much. Just a little much. Okay. And so that's the general consensus mm-hmm. from the actual like movie critics sure. that have reviewed it throughout the years. So the reason why I picked this movie is because I know that you have seen this before, mm-hmm. but you didn't like grow up with it in the same way that I did. No. I definitely saw it when I was little. I had some friends who were as obsessed with this movie as you and your family mm-hmm. sounds like are. So we definitely watched it a good bit when I was at their house. But it wasn't something that I ever watched at my own house mm-hmm. as a kid. And it wasn't something that I was like super into. So did you like remember it at all? Not really. I mean, okay. loosely, like I remembered the concept and the loose plot. Right. But other than that, no, I didn't really remember any details. So about it was this basically movie. like a brand new movie for Yeah, you. pretty much. Okay. What is the Google synopsis for Hook? Quite an elaborate synopsis, Google. <laughs> conjured up for us when his young children are abducted by his old nemesis captain hook middle-aged lawyer peter banning returns to his magical origins as peter pan peter must revisit a foggy past in which he abandoned neverland for family life leaving tinkerbell and the lost boys to fend for themselves given their bitterness toward peter for growing up and their allegiance to their new leader rufio the old gang may not be happy to see him and this movie stars dustin hoffman robin williams julia roberts maggie smith mm-hmm. and the mom from princess diaries <laughs> yes <laughs> we, we don't her know her actual name. name doesn't matter she's, she's just, just the mom, the mom from, from princess diaries yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it <laughs> when she showed up on screen you were like how do i know her and i was like wait isn't that the mom from princess diaries yeah i was like oh my god it totally it's helen <laughs> It's Helen Thermopolis. Helen Thermopolis. I also just need to quickly say that Maggie Smith, can you guess how old she is in this movie? Okay, so this was 1991 Mm -hmm. was when this movie came out. Don't try to do math. What does she look like? She looks like she's 60. You think she looks like she's 60 years old? For real? No, no, no. I mean, she looks older, but I just know she couldn't have possibly been 85 in 1991. Okay, then I I phrased my question incorrectly. How old do you think she looks in this movie? Okay, she looks like she's 80. Okay. She was 56 when they filmed this. Excuse me? 56 years old. Also, Robin Williams was 40. Whoa. So Robin Williams, when they filmed this, was only like seven years older than us. Weird. And he just like still like watching it back looks so much older. Yeah. But Maggie Smith is 56 in this movie. Was any of that makeup you think? I believe it was. I think like when I was watching this time, I was kind of checking her face. Mm -hmm. And you do see those kind of like pinched wrinkles that Uh you see on like Mrs. Doubtfire's makeup where it's just like that Mm. like faux wrinkle look Mm -hmm. and that almost like tight skin look Mm -hmm. when they when they put on like creepy looking skin yeah so they definitely use makeup to age her there's no way she's walking around looking like that at 56 but I gotta say they really did a good job on the makeup because that's just what she looks like now yeah like they really nailed they it nailed it fun fact fun little fun fact i Love have it. lots of fun facts about hook you do yeah oh my god i can't like, wait for like all the, of them like the boo box what do you mean the boo box the person they put in the boo box yeah it's glenn fucking close the pirate the pirate that they put in the boo box that goes that's the boo box <laughs> <laughs> that's glenn close what the hell And also the inspector who first comes to like check into the kids going missing is Phil Collins. Love that. (laughs) Love that. Yeah. There's like all these little like cameos and stuff. I love it. Yeah. Before we get too much into that and some of these little fun facts and tidbits. Also, it is now pouring. Yes. It is now a torrential downpour. Don't worry. We're inside. Please enjoy your ASMR (laughs) while we talk over it. While we talk about this. (laughs) Anyway. I really do want to get your initial thoughts and mm-hmm. review on this movie because, again, this is not something that you grew up with. You don't right. have, like, an allegiance of nostalgia. Not at all. And so I feel like the most objective view of this movie mm-hmm. could, can only come from someone who does not have that allegiance. Sure. So I want to ask you first, mm-hmm. fresh out of hook. We right. just finished it. Mm-hmm. 
What are your thoughts and feelings on Steven Spielberg's quote-unquote worst movie? Okay, my thoughts and opinions are twofold on this one. Having grown up in the 90s, this movie came... Okay, so this movie came out the year I was born. Having grown up in the 90s, I have a total appreciation for movies like this Uh that were made during this time. So movies that were made in the 90s and the early 2000s. I think we all sort of have an affinity for that. Right. So part of me can appreciate some of the nostalgia even if it's not a nostalgic movie to me i can see and understand Mm -hmm. why this was kind of a cult classic for kids our age right objectively as an adult viewer this movie's not great okay (laughs) (laughs) just like as a movie okay i think i do agree with some of the criticism Mm -hmm. that you were reading i think it's a little too fluffy too much craziness going on i think there were so many good things about this movie that again i can appreciate just from a nostalgia standpoint Mm -hmm. first and foremost fucking robin williams yeah you'd be hard pressed to show me a movie with robin williams that i didn't like his performance right because he is so special and i feel like because he was sort of like our dude Mm -hmm. like when we were little because he was the genie he was in mrs doubtfire he was patch adams like there were so many jumanji jumanji yes like so many like cult classics from our childhood so i felt like watching him just be him Mm -hmm. was so wonderful and there was a scene right kind of in the beginning of the movie where he laughs and it's like his actual laugh Mm -hmm. and i like i got goosebumps then and i like got goosebumps now thinking about it like he truly was just such a remarkable person you know and just i think means so much to people our age like it's sort of like the impact that steve burns had on us Mm -hmm. you know what i mean but like tenfold that's what robin williams is for us like he's this happy warm hug Mm -hmm. and so i think it was really special to watch him be him yeah and the other probably best part about this movie was dustin hoffman as dude the (laughs) best fucking captain hook ever period he was so so good and honestly just the two of them to me were the best part of this movie Mm -hmm. i think plot wise it was a little all over the place just writing wise wasn't my favorite Mm -hmm. but again you can tell it's steven spielberg it's you got the score from john williams that score is like like music to my ears quite literally like it is just it makes me jump out of my seat yeah it makes (laughs) you want to feel like you're flying like that's what john williams does he he evokes such emotion and so i think i absolutely understand why people our age are like hook's the best fucking movie like we love hook like all these things because i have a little bit more of like an objective view and separation from it yeah and separation from it i can say this is definitely not like one of the best movies I've ever seen mm-hmm. by any stretch of the imagination. Right. But I can absolutely appreciate the good things about it. Yeah. It, it's hard to watch something like this and not feel nostalgic. Mm-hmm. Just like when I watched E.T. Well, because there's so many movies that are like this. Sure. That I feel like it just puts you back into that time period yeah. where everything was more tangible Mm -hmm. i feel like back then the sets were set Mm -hmm. and it almost was like they were filming a really extravagant play yeah exactly and now children's movies are often either like they're animated or they have a lot of special effects and vfx and green screen and Mm -hmm. the look and feel of this movie is something that we get with like the goonies where we have those big set pieces Mm -hmm. and like in the Goonies there's even like a pirate ship and even to some extent like the Indiana Jones movies sure and they all have kind of the same cadence and the same rhythm to it but I feel like and I don't know if this is something that I am just bringing like my own bias to but I feel like if everyone had no idea that this movie was directed by Steven Spielberg Mm -hmm. I have a feeling it would have been accepted better because it doesn't have to be E.T. It doesn't have Mm -hmm. to be this 
Oscar nominated thing, which I think people are just so used to Steven Spielberg, Mm -hmm. you know, giving us like Oscar worthy content. But at the same time, it's and I might offend people here. I feel like it's the same quality as the Goonies. I feel like that. And I feel like The Goonies is a much more like critically accepted Mm -hmm. movie. When it came out, I feel like maybe they were like, wait, like, Steven, you okay, bud? Like, (laughs) what's going on here? It was like the bell curve. They were like, "Uh, (laughs) maybe not this one. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they were almost holding it to like a Steven Spielberg standard of like, you know, this has to be something that we're going to put up for an Oscar. Sure. But if you compare this to other children's movies of the time, like what we were saying Mm -hmm. that those list of kind of super nostalgic films, Mm -hmm. I feel like this is just right up there with all of them. They yeah. all have weird shit that happens. Yes. Like, and questionable plot questionable points. Questionable plot points, things that don't make a lot of sense. If you watch back, like, Beetlejuice, like, half of Beetlejuice doesn't make sense. No. Half of Hocus Pocus doesn't make Mm-mm. sense. Hocus Pocus wasn't, like, critically well accepted either. Sure. But I feel like, as a society, we have moved towards adultifying our children's movies to Mm -hmm. the point that every children's movie you put out now has like adult themes and they make you cry and they're Mm -hmm. these super heavy movies that are almost like tailored more towards adults than they are for kids even like adult jokes yeah more than it is jokes for kids yeah and i feel like back then there was a much better balance of movies just like legitimately just being for kids Mm -hmm. and so there were Definitely things I think though that as an adult watching this back, I felt like I understood a little bit better because Mm -hmm. I've watched this more in my adult life as something I put on when I'm like not feeling well and Mm -hmm. I want to just like have something have something in the background. But it's not something that I'll ever sit down and watch all the way through because it's something that's like a comfort movie and not something that you sit and you watch. Mm And I think I did actually appreciate some things more now. I just kind of growing up just took Hook as like, he's Hook. He's iconic. Dustin Mm -hmm. Hoffman is so great in it. He's funny. Finally, like figuring out or not figuring it out. Like it's like this novel thing, but paying (laughs) attention to the concept of Hook's greatest fear, not being a clock, not being a a crocodile, not being Peter. His greatest fear is time. Mm -hmm. And he feels like, he has nothing left in his life to give and Mm -hmm. his time is running out Mm -hmm. and like that made him such a more interesting character on this watch for me yeah and i'll say even though i don't have children i as an adult can appreciate peter's story a little bit better Mm -hmm. and i can understand his arc Sure. with more clarity so i'm just gonna say that like i still love this movie and there are things there are lines that i think are so iconic mm-hmm. in this movie and there are <laughs> lines that i actually picked up on in this new watch which was one of them was oh please no i have a bad back yeah <laughs> which like oh how relatable was Sent me. <laughs> and there were like these little things that i picked up on more that peter says that robin williams brilliantly delivers mm-hmm. that are these little adult jokes that we're gonna get here and there and i feel like i finally picked up on all of them uh-huh. i feel like it's still the comedy still holds up like i mm-hmm. feel like it's very hilarious the scenes yeah. with hook are still funny the scenes with robin williams are still funny my favorite scene and it was as a child and it still is now and it makes me laugh out loud is when they're playing pirate baseball uh-huh. and they go he's stealing second and the, guy, <laughs> and the catcher stands up and just shoots the guy yes. stealing second <laughs> it's so fucking funny i will say that even though i love her i in this watch throw away tinkerbell yeah throw her away yeah in a weird way they could have cast somebody younger to play her Mm -hmm. but then also you would have had to get rid of the scene where she professes her love and kisses him right but i feel like that scene just could have been thrown away in general exactly because we already have the weird dynamic of granny loving him yeah and now tinkerbell also loves him it's just everyone's in love with robin williams yes and i understand what they were trying to go for with that Mm -hmm. is like you know they've loved him in each one of his lifetimes basically sure but 
completely unnecessary (laughs) yeah (laughs) and this is maybe the worst performance i've seen from julia roberts it's just really awkward and really painful to watch not good I never was like a huge fan of Tinkerbell when I was younger, but I think mm-hmm. I just was like, oh, well, it's Peter Pan. You need to have Tinkerbell there. Uh huh. I know there are like Tinkerbell stands in this world who like love Tinkerbell. Yeah. <laughs> Tinkerbell. <laughs> Tinkerbell is their favorite. But <laughs> I just, I've never been a Tinkerbell person. She kind no. of annoys me. It's annoying. Even cartoon Tinkerbell yeah. annoys me. She's cartoon like a little Tinkerbell sucks. She's like a little slut too. Cartoon Tinkerbell actually sucks. Sorry, like I'm slut shaming Tinkerbell right now. Well, yeah, we should probably shouldn't do that. But, but cartoon... she's like a little like suggestive. She's always like looking over her shoulder and like showing her little butt. Because she wants Peter Pan. Yeah. And Peter Pan does not want you, Tinkerbell. Give it up. <laughs> Go to bed in your clock and save it. <laughs> Go to bed in your clock. But, I agree. I felt like she, her performance was weird. Her voice sounded weird. And I was like, are, did they like pitch mm-hmm. her voice up or something? She like did it was sound very weird. strange. The whole, her hair was very off putting to me. Yeah. Like the whole, the whole thing with Tinkerbell really it just could have not happened. Mm-hmm. And also off putting to me was the weird dynamic between him and Maggie Smith. Like that made me very uncomfortable. It was like yeah. a little Benjamin Buttony. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, Ugh, I don't love yeah. that. Uh, his like great grandmother has a crush on him. Like this is weird. Technically great no. grandmother in law. Well, no, it's not his great grandmother, but it's right. a great grandmother. Right. <laughs> so it's just like, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just like, Ooh, hello boy. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> give us a squidge give us a squidge Ooh, it just sounds ooh, i don't know yeah i think there were watching it back with a more like analytical eye there are certainly things that could have been cut out of the <laughs> script the whole obviously like weird relationship with granny mm-hmm. could have been played a lot differently i feel like it almost would have made more sense if he didn't marry her daughter yes and it was just like he came back to the real to world visit to visit her and just was like i want to try this out like i'm mm-hmm. ready basically mm-hmm. to to grow up right and i feel like he could have met an american girl because they said he was adopted by american parents so he could have sure. just been like had a normal life it mm-hmm. didn't have to be like intertwined with her yeah, as much the family connection yeah made it weirder I which think. this wasn't written by steven spielberg so i think no. that is something to note if we are criticizing the writing he did not write this or come right. up with the story obviously right. he i'm sure he had a say sure. in it. but i will also say that one of the things that i read in some of the critiques just going through like old reviews was a lot of people thought that the representation of the Lost Boys was a little quote unquote ridiculous. Like people didn't like hmm. the the skateboarding and the bangarang and the food fight scene and all of that. But I feel like watching this, I was like, this is the most accurate representation if you let 12 year old boys create a village yeah i was gonna say that didn't bother me at all (laughs) that was like nothing about the lost boys bothered me because it was imaginative it was creative and like you said it was pretty accurate i feel like yeah because kids do weird shit yeah i was not bothered by those scenes at all i didn't find them to be like too fantastical no or ridiculous i think those were like some of the most vibrant and fun scenes because you could tell like the kids were having fun. Mm-hmm. You could tell Robin Williams was having fun. And some and of the, the lo- kids oh my God, they're were so, so freaking cute. They're so cute. But I couldn't stand it. Thud and Pockets are like my favorite oh my characters in the entire movie. The most adorable children in the world. <laughs> of them. Oh, there you are, Peter. Yeah. So oh, sweet. Precious. I will say growing up, Rufio's little crop top did something to me as of a child. Of course it did. When he showed up in his little crop top, I was like, mm, I, I like a boy in a crop top. That's where it all started. That's where it all started. Rufio it was, started the oh crop top. Oh my God, top. it was Rufio's fault that I like this. Well, I mean, I had to say it. Like he was definitely a childhood crush of mine. and That makes sense. I, I loved the swagger. I liked the crop top. Mm-hmm. I liked everything about it. Yeah. And I remember just speaking of rufio i as a child no matter how many times i watched that movie was just devastated 
that Rufio gets killed. Yeah. Like that was really unfortunate. Absolutely devastated. <laughs> yeah. I feel like they didn't need to kill Rufio. I mean, I understand it because I feel like the stakes almost feel a little too low at some points sure. when they're in this fight where, you know, the Lost Boys are using like marbles and paint and tomatoes mm-hmm. and eggs to fight back that I feel like the actual danger of grown men with swords gets lost mm-hmm. in that process, which maybe that is a mistake. Like maybe that is the his death is too shocking because it comes after this kind of yeah fantasy like fight where things aren't really scary. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's a good moment to kind of bring us like back into reality almost. Okay. But that doesn't mean that I'm not, I'm still devastated by it. So yeah. rest in peace, Rufio. R.I.P. Rufio. I'm also just quickly going to say that another just absolutely iconic scene that I am still obsessed with to this day is when Captain Hook threatens to commit suicide. Yes. <laughs> don't oh try God. to stop me, Smee. Smee, don't try to stop me, Smee. <laughs> try to stop me, Smee. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm i committing suicide. <laughs> Smee, I'm committing suicide. <laughs> <laughs> the dynamic between Hook and Smee is mm-hmm. just worth like watching the movie alone. For sure. So I feel like despite its imperfections, which I can admit that there are imperfections, this is by no means a perfect movie. I still feel like there are so many characters, so many lines, so many jokes, so many scenes that are so iconic and the delivery and the feeling and the vibe and everything about it like hasn't gone away as I've aged. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what makes Hook so special to me. And I know to a lot of other people who are our age, it is something that I feel like I'm going to watch literally until I am an old person until you're 56 but you look like you're 84 (laughs) (laughs) all that being said Mm -hmm. what is your popcorn score for hook my popcorn score is a medium because I do not hate this movie Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even say I dislike this movie it is a really fun watch especially if you are our age because of just the time period that it came out like you said I think that's part of why it holds up so well because okay sure is this Steven Spielberg's best movie no no is it his worst I don't know I haven't seen enough to know I'm gonna say something incredibly I already know you already know what I'm gonna say Mm -hmm. the Fablemans was just rat garbage it is just chewed up (laughs) rat garbage in the streets of new york spit up and thrown out i don't care if it's his life story Mm -hmm. you know i'm so sorry steven fuck your life steven fuck your life steven (laughs) i think if you are looking at the fablemans which again i'm gonna get canceled for saying this and and hook Eh. i still think hook is like a better movie even though it's a completely different genre Very different. for a completely different audience. Mm-hmm. I would never, ever, ever put Hook as Steven Spielberg's worst. I don't think so either. There's all enough of all the right things to make it a medium for me. Mm-hmm. And I think just because I didn't grow up with it and it's not super personal to me and I can't quote it is probably why it's not a large for me. Mm-hmm. What is your popcorn score? Objectively, mm-hmm. it's probably a medium. Okay. It is a, a large forever and always in my heart and in mm-hmm. my mind. And I think there are a lot of other people who would consider it a large popcorn. And watching it again, as I said earlier, as an adult and picking up on those more subtle themes of aging and growing up and growing mm-hmm. old, I really feel like There is more meat to this story than critics gave it credit for. And I feel like there are truly funny moments, funny scenes that are still funny to this day. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to say it like the child actors, I feel like across the board, the the little girl is a little iffy, but... The, all the Lost Boys, I think Jack is actually really good yeah, in this movie, his so son too. Jack. And so I feel like I think it's a large because of all of those things, mm-hmm. but I can see objectively that it would be a medium because there are issues mm-hmm. and it could have been shorter and we could have cut Tink and we could have cut these weird <sighs> scenes yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. However, saying that this movie is a small or a mm-hmm. bad movie 
or according to Rotten Tomatoes, 29% of reviewers even liked it. That's insane to me. It's a little much. You know who, what has a better Rotten Tomato score than this movie? What? Where the Crawdads Sing. Get the fuck out of here. I just do not and cannot believe that this movie is a below 50% movie. No. That this is a, you know, below three star out of five. That this is below a medium popcorn no. in our, you know, rating scale. And so I feel like that small popcorn or that low score or whatever from all of these other critics it's just like i'm still my mind is still blown even though i've looked at it now with a more analytical eye i just don't see a 29 percent. no it's not bad i and i agree with you not even less 29 percent would be bad 29 is like a <laughs> bomb movie 29 you know percent I mean? is like really shitty horror movies that are yes. like sequels upon sequels yes that's just like saw four that's like really dramatic let's see if saw four that's actually Ooh, really interesting okay. let's see if saw four has if it does i'm out and i'm canceling rotten tomatoes okay no software has an 18 percent. Okay. <laughs> okay 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 that's fair <laughs> yeah we're good that's fair as we'll long as it, it was honestly as long as it was lower than 29 i'm good with it <laughs> 18 is just about right for software. that honestly seems generous for software <laughs> Well, that does it for us. I know that there are other people out there who love this movie as much as I do. It's not just you. It's not just I me. You. <laughs> I you are not alone. I am not alone, and I know this because I think every single one of my siblings and cousins <laughs> also love this movie. Yes. So it was just something that was like ingrained in my family growing up, and I feel like it has to be true for a lot of other millennials and, sure. and kids and so i'm just gonna start like a hook support group where like yeah we all just talk about how much we love hook and how yeah. everybody else is full of shit love it love it love that journey for you <laughs> <laughs> we will be back with another throwback episode to finish out august mm -hmm. it's gonna be caitlin's pick we don't know what it is i also don't know what it is yeah we are gonna find out but next week we will all find out <laughs> everyone's gonna find out together and we're all gonna find out together what our next throwback movie is well we'll see you next time for caitlin's throwback and until then we hope you have a great week go rewatch hook i promise it's it's not bad i promise you'll love it it's not you should watch it <laughs> you should watch it <laughs> thanks for joining us on the ride home